Hi there. Hope you're doing well. I'm Ramtin, and this is the NetAdmin Hub channel. In this video, we're going to talk about OpenWRT. We won't go too deep. Our goal is just to get more familiar with it. OpenWRT is an operating system, open source and based on Linux, that we can install on PC, VM, or our network devices, specifically routers, modems, and access points, to unlock more features and capabilities. What is firmware? Well, we have hardware and we have software, but there's also something called firmware. Basically, it's an operating system that works on a much lower level and can directly communicate with the hardware, giving us access to its features. If you've ever gone into the settings page of your router, you've actually accessed the device's firmware. So OpenWRT can be installed in place of that firmware and provide better features. If you have a router from a brand like TP-Link or D-Link, chances are it doesn't give you access to all the features you might need. So you end up looking to buy different hardware, like a MicroTik router board. In fact, what you need is the router OS operating system and the features it offers. So you end up buying another piece of hardware. But now, instead of doing that, you can use your existing router for this purpose. You can install the OpenWRT operating system on it, which actually gives you way more features than MicroTik router OS. Of course, the condition is OpenWRT must be available for your device. Take a look. This is the OpenWRT website at openwrt.org. I'll go to the Supported Devices section and bring up the table of hardware here. So far, OpenWRT has been released for around 2,000 devices. I can use the filters up here. For example, I'll look up an old TP-Link router, the WR740. I think I've had this device since 2015 or 2016. It's actually a device that doesn't have any special features anymore and isn't really useful to me. But look, when I search for it, OpenWRT has been released for most of its hardware versions. I can install it and take advantage of its features. Right now, as I'm recording this video, the latest version of OpenWRT is 22.03. You can see here that version 18.06 is available for my device, and that's totally fine. All the features I need haven't really changed much since version 18. Based on the hardware version, I can come here open the tech data page for the device, go to my device's dedicated page, and here there's a really good document explaining how I can install it on my device. And down here, it's also provided the link so I can download and install it on the device. So I can easily move forward with this process. After installing OpenWRT, we can connect to it both through a browser and via SSH, configure it, install the packages we need, and continue with our work. Let's also take a look at the user guide here. Now, the top part is mostly about the installation process, but starting from here, where the configuration section begins, as you can see, it has a very, very extensive document covering everything you might possibly need in your network. And it still doesn't end here. It continues even further down. So OpenWRT can do everything you'd expect a router to be capable of. It handles it all for you. In fact, the real strength of OpenWRT lies in its package management, just like in Linux, where, for example, in Ubuntu we could install software using APT, or in CentOS using YUM, OpenWRT also has its own package manager. And through it, we can search for, install, and use many of the tools and features we need. For example, when it comes to VPN protocols, OpenWRT supports many of them, like OpenVPN, OpenConnect, WireGuard, and even V2Ray, you can easily install them and take advantage of their features. For instance, it supports SSH tunneling, can be turned into a web server or an FTP server, and it has a very powerful firewall. All of these features and many more are available to you. There's another thing that comes up. A lot of people wonder whether they should install OpenWRT or PFSense. For those who may not know, PFSense is also an operating system like OpenWRT that we can use to manage our network. PFSense, OPNSense, and a few other similar OS are mostly designed for the x86 architecture. That means they can be installed on laptops, desktops, or even servers, and they can't be installed on embedded devices. But OpenWRT, in addition to being installable on x86 systems, can also be installed on embedded devices like routers and modems. So basically, you can level up your device. You can take a really old device that's practically useless 
and turn it into a router that's even more powerful than a microtip. One last thing if you still haven't decided on your next router purchase, I recommend. Search for the model you're considering and make sure that OpenWRT is available for it. That way, if at some day you don't find the features you need in the stock firmware, you can switch to OpenWRT and still use the device. That's all for now. In the upcoming videos, I'll be sharing a lot more details about OpenWRT. That includes the installation process on different devices, configuring it, managing it, and a bunch of other things. This video was just an introduction to get familiar with what OpenWRT is and what features it offers. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I'd really appreciate it. If you do it, it's a great way to support me. Your support gives me the energy and motivation to create more and better videos. Also, don't forget to check out the Telegram channel. The link is in the description. I share scripts, downloadable files, and additional tutorials there. So feel free to join and make use of the content. On Instagram, I also try to post news related to technology and IT that impacts our daily lives. So if you're interested, you can follow me there as well. Take care and see you in the next video.